is that it's not detecting items that are, that are perhaps of less interest, such as salt residue inside the vessel. So it's certainly not a weakness, although it might limit the ability of the sovereign to detect problems further into the laminate stack. And hence you can see there is, that both meters have their own individual strengths. As moisture meters calculate the moisture content based on the conductivity of the material, a common question asked is whether the metal present in anti-fouling paints affects the moisture meter readings. By using range 2 on these samples, the GRP range, we can compare some unpainted gel coat where we get a reading of about 38, just under 40 points on scale 2 with these different anti-fouling paints. Here we have Trilux, which is common on stern drive units, again giving us a reading just under 40. The same on the Interspeed Ultra, Cruiser Premium, Cruiser Uno. All the paints giving similar readings to the bare gel coat, so we can say that there isn't any effect. And indeed, even copper coat uh, does not normally show any effect. However, when paints are first uh, removed from the water, they will retain a lot of moisture and they can mislead you into thinking that the laminate itself is wet. On the Tramex moisture meter, we've got a third range, range three, which is called the surface moisture range. Again, it's just a comparative or relative scale. If we place this onto some paint that has just had a wet cloth just wiped over it, we can see that we get a reading here of zero because it's quite a hard, um, glossy finish to the paint. If we go on to a more porous paint, we actually get a reading of about 25 on the, sur on the range 3, the surface moisture reading. If we were then to compare this paint on range 2, where we were looking at the laminate, you can see we actually get an almost a full scale deflection, 95 points on, the, uh, on range 2. And this paint, Optima by International, uh, you can see retains a lot of moisture. It's actually a water-based paint and it retains a lot of moisture. So it would be misleading to say that the laminate itself had a high moisture content when using range 3 we can see that it's actually the moisture is in the surface layers only. Now that would also apply to epoxy coats uh, or any other finishes that might be on the, over the top of the laminate. So that's what you can use range 3 for. So although we're happy that most, most modern anti-foulings don't give a positive reading with the, with the moisture meter, we will always need to check because we're not going to be certain what anti-fouling we're dealing with and there are still some uh, ones that have either aluminium or certainly anything that's coloured using graphite will uh, show a very high false reading. And when doing a full survey, it's always necessary to inspect the gel coat to look for blisters, wicking, and any other um, surface defects. And so it, it will always be the case that you're going to remove some of the anti-fouling paint uh, using a paint scraper like this, or even a chisel. Um, and if you're going to do that, do remember that you need to be wearing gloves, some eye protection, and as a minimum, uh, a basic dust mask. If the anti-fouling paint is very dry, it's always advisable to wet it down a little before you start. You're going to scrape off an area of anti-fouling that's large enough in the first instance to accommodate the electrodes. So it is going to have to be quite a large area. Once we've ascertained that there's no difference between the area which we've scraped versus an area with anti-fouling paint, then we can carry on for the moisture meter readings, we can carry on and take readings directly through the paint. Of course, you're still going to need to remove a number of coupons to inspect the gel coat all over the boat looking for damage or signs of repair or blisters. That peeping by the way is the Tramex. Um, it turns, it starts to turn itself off after two minutes. It doesn't have an off button and uh, that's why you'll hear that noise occasionally. So now it's, it's switched itself off. Moisture meters are also very useful for checking the wooden core in transoms and decks which are prone to leaks around the fittings. However, it's important to remember that the Tramex on range 2 is very sensitive and full-scale deflection equates to only 3% moisture content by weight. As we've seen earlier, dry wood is at least 10% moisture by weight and therefore one should use the meter on range 1, the wood range, 
and be aware that the meter will be desensitized by the laminate that encapsulates it. Again, the meter should be used for comparison between a dry area and the suspected wet area. To speed up the recording process and to improve accuracy, we'd recommend that you prepare some template documents such as this with a checklist reminding you to take air temperature, relative humidity, time of day, the weather at the time of the survey, if it can be determined accurately, how long has the boat been in the water, when was the boat lifted, and then directly onto the template you can enter your moisture meter readings as you take them. This will ensure when you get back to your office you can summarise the information accurately and give the client an overall opinion on the hull in association with your other visual and physical inspection. Finally, let's take a look at how we should calibrate the two instruments. Both Tramex and Sovereign offer factory calibration services. For a small fee of approximately 50 euros, they will issue an annual calibration certificate. However, it's worth checking your instrument more often than this, and to do that, you can simply use a piece of tropical hardwood such as mahogany or teak that has a specific gravity of about 0.6. If your wood has a specific gravity outside of this, you'll need to use the calibration table within the Tramex booklet. By setting the meter on range 1, simply check that the meter reads between 10 and 12%. Any readings outside of this, and the meter should be sent back to the factory for checking. The same with the Sovereign. This should be used on range A, and then the meter should be read on scale A. And again, we would expect to see a reading of between 10 and 12% for a wood of specific gravity of 0.6. For more information on using moisture meters in the field, please take a look at some of the publications at the end of this video. Or alternatively, start a new thread on the IIMS online forum.